So thank you all for joining. Let's get started. Most of you probably already know me, but for those who are new. A lot of functions have been added across time in Excel, but. Recently in Office 365, many revolutionary functions were added, and that is the set of functions we are going to primarily focus on. Now in general. Even while you are using the older functions, you generally get a chance if there is an equivalent improved function which has been added. How does that work? While you are typing the function, generally you come to know. That there is a exclamation mark there and a warning sign that generally means there is a better version of the function for whatever reason, and it's in your interest to at least look at the sentence which describes to see what is the difference. Ideally, you should explore the function. Understand what is the benefit and if that is applicable to you, you should try to retrofit it into your existing stuff. Now many of the new functions have their own features and what they do, but by and large there is a revolutionary new thing which has happened when it comes to Office Pro Plus. Now I know that all of you may be using different versions of Office, but many of these new functions which I showed you earlier work in Office Pro Plus. That means the Pro Plus version, the Office 365 subscription version. Like I showed you, some of the features are available in the desktop 2019, some of them 13, some of them 16, but majority of the functions we are going to talk about require a specific version of Office. You may or may not have that on day one, but if the benefit is significant, then you can take a call. Now, what has changed? What is revolutionary? So the important thing which has changed is if a formula returns a value, of course it is shown in the cell, but if a formula can return multiple values, you don't have to do anything special. The formula does its job, and multiple values are shown instead of one. That is the simplest way of describing the revolution. When I talked about it, it doesn't sound revolutionary, but as we go along, we will understand what I'm saying. This thing of a formula automatically expanding the results is called a dynamic array or a dynamic spill. Earlier, some of you may have used CAC formulas or they are called array formulas. So now what has changed? You don't have to press CSE control space shift enter. Just press normal enter and potentially every formula is a expandable formula and unlike array formulas, you don't have to know what is going to be the size of the output for those who have never used array formulas. Whatever I just said may not make any dif difference, but don't worry about that because even those who know what is array formula don't have to worry about it now. So let's actually see it in action. Before we go there, I have a lot of functions, a lot of samples, a lot of formulas. So there is a special formula itself called. Formula text. It's not new, I think 2013, but for documenting what I'm doing, I'm using formula text. So if I put a formula here, I can either show the results or the formula, but if I want to show both, then I use formula text. You can also use it for documenting your complex formulas wherever required. So let's see this dynamic spill kind of thing in action. What do I mean by that? So this is a simple table. Table does not just mean something has rows and columns. It's a formal table. What do I mean? You have to go to insert and choose table. Once you do that, you get table design and you should ideally give it a name so that you can refer to it effectively later. Now let us see what happens. I'm going to delete this. The name of this table. How do you know the name of the table? Click inside the table table design. You see the name my data now. The simplest formula is I want a copy of this table. So notice I'm just typing my data. 
I didn't have to type it. It understands it. Type it. Press enter. Now what is it going to do? It's going to give me the entire table. It did not give me the header. There is a way to do that also, but it just gives me this data back. Nothing great, but the difference here is when I add a new item that automatically appears there. So this is called dynamic spill. Now this was just a reference to the table, but once you have table, we have something called structured reference, which you need to understand. For example, I wanted let's say amount divided by two. Normally what you would have done is gone to E4 divided by two. Now of course that will work, but if you click here, notice you get this. This is called a structured reference. At the rate means current row and then the column name. So now if I say divide by two, it just works. Of course, if I change the name of the column, you don't have to worry. The structured reference will manage itself and so on. So this is called a structured reference. Now the same structured reference I can use outside. So this is my data and now if I say my data amount, I don't have to type it square bracket opening. I have to do then I say amount. Then I say square bracket complete. It will give me the entire array. Now this is a special thing. Only when your cursor is inside it, the blue border is seen. When you go outside, it looks like regular data. Click inside the boundary is shown to you. Now this formula is giving me so many results, but I cannot edit the formula here. Notice this is inactive. The only first cell is active. So here if I want, I can edit the formula and let's say I change it from something to card type. For example, it will adjust itself, but I cannot insert anything in between. Now the other important thing here is suppose I put a formula, but there was something else here. I have some data here unrelated and now I type the data or the spill formula, so to say. Now notice it doesn't have enough space to expand. So in that case you will get a spill error. So one care we have to take while using all these new formulas is that they can expand when the raw data expands. So you need to make sure such overlap doesn't happen. It's not all gone. It's not that it is an error in that sense. I move it out of this and then it will come back, but it is better to be proactive while we are working on this. All right, so enough about these. Now this is an array and this is a table. That's another thing which you have to understand. And as of now, tables and arrays don't mix. This is the table which is the input to this array. This is not a table. Understand that. Now, in many cases, we need to refer to this that we will see later, but there is a way of doing that. Suppose for whatever reason, I wanted to count all these guys. What will I do? I will say count A and then what do I do? H3, if I just say, it's just going to give me one. So because I'm referring to the array, another special thing you have to understand. Hash, this is a very, very powerful thing. And now it will do the job. And now if I was adding some more data here, Obviously, it's going to work dynamically. So earlier we had to do offset and all kinds of jugglery and in macros we had to go in a loop and find out where the data ends. All that is now gone. So that is what I mean. Many of the things which we have done earlier in the manual way of doing things and more of a workaround or VBA, all of that can get completely eliminated. Lesser overheads from maintenance point of view and obviously much, much faster performance. So these so called auto expanding functions, there are many of them. We will go through them one by one and see how this works. So let's start with something simple. We already seen this array. There's another simple function which I'm sure all of you have used before called concatenate. Now notice by the way, this is the formula which is here. So what is the formula I have put? to be or not to be. That is my raw data. And here I have put a formula called concatenate. Now you'll realize that 
here typically what is the syntax of concatenate individual text instead of that i have given the entire table so the name of this table is c data now what happened the concatenate is a very old function it doesn't understand array formula but it expanded so this is how it works but of course generally when we concatenate we don't want it like this what do we want we want it like this in this case i'll have to give and manually choose one two three one by one which is really really painful so that was the problem with the old concatenate function so microsoft created a new function and as i told you earlier when you about to type concat notice you get what do you get you get a even if i am trying to type it says concatenate which is there exclamation mark say join several string but you should notice that there is a concat and use and at least try it out so this is the new concatenate what have i said concat c data and it just does the job we don't have to bother this is good and the benefit of this now notice this is concatenate the old one and this is new one output is same but look at the effort and more importantly when i do this the old one is absolutely not going to understand it because i did not manually type b12 whereas this is auto expanding similarly we have another need because this got stuck to each other i want spaces in between concat syntax is very simple just give it text here text can be an array as we are seeing it and i could have multiple arrays and all that but there is no delimiter option so that is why there is a even more powerful text join function so what does this do this is the delimiter first parameter is the delimiter okay what does that do i can specify a delimiter then second one is if there is an empty cell do you want to ignore it or show it true means ignore empty and then one or more inputs which is the same c data so i got to be or not to be now this delimiter right now was just a single space i can go and do this i have given plus comma star i can put any number of delimiters here and it is going to work so this is how text join works but that's not all there's one more thing we need to understand if we want to pass multiple things in a single parameter as an array because nowadays everything or every function seems to understand an array how do i do that so the syntax for an array is square bracket and then a comma delimited sorry comma delimited list of various things so using that let's use a text join function like this so i have multiple columns here salutation name last name and i want output like this this is a text join now the problem is somewhere i want period someone want comma someone has space so text join does take a delimiter but if i had put a delimiter like this for example if i said just give me a second text join and i tried multiple of these things what do i want comma and period and space three types of delimiter now if i put comma and space and period what is going to happen and then i don't want ignore empty so i leave it alone which is ignore and then i have to give the text how do i give the text just to make you understand i click there this then the next one actually i want the l name first and then this now this will work no problem but what will happen that comma and period went in each of the spaces so to say wherever there is a joint i don't want that that is why we have to use an array kind of functionality so look at this i have a text join i am passing multiple parameters in that in the first parameter i am passing one called dot and space 
and the second one is comma and space. So what happened? First joining, it used the dot and space, and second joining, it used comma and space. Imagine how powerful this is. Of course, you could have done it using flash fill, but flash fill is not a formula. So as we go along, you will understand the combined cumulative significant transformational impact of all these functions. There's another one here. Let's see. These are again two new functions, array to text and value to text. They are in beta stage right now. You may or may not have it even if you have Office Pro Plus because some things get released in the Office Insider version and then they get released after a month or so. So this is my data. Array base is the name of the file. So we have a function called array to text. What does that do? Just takes the input and converts it like this. Now this automatically delimited it by comma. Why? Because my current locale is New Zealand, I think, and comma is the delimiter. This has one more parameter called strict, where it takes this more formal kind of thing where there are inverted commas and delimiters and so on. And this returns something which can potentially be an array. So this array to text strict can be used as an input for something else. Similarly, we have a value to text function which converts anything which you give it to text. So it's like applying text format into bracket, second parameter as at the rate kind of thing. But value to text returns one value. So if I give the whole thing, it is going to give me output like this. So in this case, it doesn't matter. But value to text is another upcoming beta function right now. OK, next one. We have sequence. What is sequence? Very simple. I want a sequence of five numbers. Sequence five. What are the parameters it takes? Sequence. How many rows do you want it? How many columns you want it in? What is the starting value and what is the step value? So in simple terms, it is like what we always had here for insert series in a function oriented manner. So what is this? This is sequence of five two. So five rows, two columns. If I don't specify the start to start value, default is one, so it's one to ten. This is also sequence five rows, one column starts with 10 and the step value is minus 0.1 and you get the idea. This is an interesting one. Roman has always been a function, so I just encapsulated that about outside the sequence and you get like this. So starting with three and three, five, seven, nine, eleven, like that. Now, generally what happens when there is a sequence in rows and columns, one, two, three, four, like this, it'll happen. If you want one, two, three, four, five, and five like that, then you will have to use a transpose. There is no way to change the order in which sequence creates functions like this. There is no parameter which says it should be in rows or columns. That's why we use a transpose function. Again, sequence by itself may be of limited use just for some serial numbers and stuff like that, but generally sequence is used as part of other functions. Now some of you may be doing Monte Carlo analysis or any kind of random number distribution statistical analysis where we require a set of random numbers. We have always had random numbers, but there is more now. For example, I wanted simple random number. Rand is the function. I am sure you know that. It is not a new function. It gives you a decimal value between 0 and 1. Nothing new, nothing complicated. If you want a value between a range, again not new, rand between, and I'm saying give me value between 10 and 20,000. Fair enough. But now if I wanted, these two are old functions, random and rand between. Now if I wanted a decimal rand between, there was no such thing. So I would have to do something like this to get it. Now we have a combined function of all this called rand array. Because what happens in this random between functions is I have to copy this formula. Of course, it's a table, so it will copy it, but still I have to copy it. So just to illustrate this, this is an array, but this is a function giving me all this. So it's like sequence, 
but instead of giving sequential numbers, it is giving me random numbers. So how does it work? It is picking up uh, how many rows I want, how many columns I want, and it has a parameter which is called. This is the last parameter. It says, do you want this to be integer or not, true or false? So just to make this easier to understand, I have put the input parameters here, which are referring here, and this is a checkbox which makes it true or false. And I can change the values from here. I hope you know how to do this. This is not a new feature. In developer tab, insert a scroll bar. Go to scroll bar format control. Attach it to this cell. In this case, this cell and choose the beginning and ending. So this way you can create a lot of interesting stuff. So that is Rand array new function. All right now. Suppose you wanted increasing random numbers. What does that mean? The random numbers when I say random, whether it is ran between or rand array, what am I telling this guy? I'm saying there's many rows, there's many columns. This is my minimum and this is my maximum. Now it's a random number generator function. It can generate 10, it can generate 20,000, then 5,000, then 200. I can't control it, it's random function. But suppose you want random numbers, but they should increase like this. These are also random, but they're increasing. How do you do that? So here is the deal. This is where we are using a sequence function with rand between. So what am I asking this guy to do? Let's see. I am saying create a sequence of five rows and four columns. OK, start with one fine. And what is the last parameter? How much to step? That I randomized. So I've said that step value itself is changing every time this is getting calculated. If you wanted more spaced out, increase this distance. If you wanted more dense, decrease this distance. Essentially, this will always be random numbers in ascending order. Great. Now there is another function, very, very powerful function called unique. If I wanted unique, typically we would go to pivot table, drag drop that column and copy paste values. That was probably the fastest way of getting unique without writing a formula. Of course, there are formula ways of doing it, but now it's really, really simple. This is the unique function. What is the formula? Unique. Unique what? It needs an array, which is this column. And what is the second parameter? By column, I don't want anything. And exactly once, what does that mean? Exactly once means what? Let me show you. Exactly once means show me the column, show me the data if it appears in the entire range only once. So really distinct. Normally unique means distinct. The last parameter, if I make it true, notice what happens. Right now it is false. So this parameter is by column, so I'll say just leave it alone and here I'll say true. So now what happens? Only signature came because signature is the only one which has appeared once. So that is really unique versus regular unique. That is how it works. Now, where is this useful? Of course, it is useful in many, many, many different places, but this is the fastest way to get an input for a drop down. Now I'll just create a drop down based on this. All the time we need drop downs for interactivity, which generally we do using data validation. We will go here and say list. And in the list we will try to give a source. Now this is the formula which I have unique, whatever, whatever. Unfortunately, this cannot be given as a source here. So if I try to put this, it's just not going to work. So if I do this, it would have been amazing if it worked, but right now it is not going to work because backward compatibility, I guess, but I can create this. OK, now I go to data validation because I have the unique list somewhere already created, then I can use it. The only extra precaution you have to take is. Obviously click on the first first what cell and I've already given it a name. That's why it's called card type. But if I do that, notice what happens in my drop down. 
sorry. I only signature. What happened? So the idea is I gave a cell name. That cell happens to have an array formula, but I did not refer to the array formula, so that hash is very important. And now I get a drop down with this list. And of course, if I add a new item in the raw data, wherever that raw data might be, this will get updated. And needless to say, my drop down also gets updated. This is really useful. And of course, then I can use this in other functions and it will work as expected. We will come to sort later, but suppose you wanted this to be sorted. I would just have to wrap it here. So I'm not using unique function inside sort. I'm using it outside by referring to this array. And the same way instead of referring to this cell by its name called F4, I'm referring to card type. You get the idea. Very nice. Now sort. Now while we are at sort, might as well do it properly. So this is my simple data. This is a table. This table has a name, of course, S base. What? Now sort is a very powerful function. Sort array. Then what is the next parameter? Next parameter is in this array, what is the index? So I want to sort it by amount. Then sort order. So this needs a little explanation. So I'm going to space ascending or descending. And then the last parameter is do you want to sort it by row or by column? So that's that. So as you can see, the data is exactly replicated because what have I said? Give me the entire data. So it got sorted by amount. I have put conditional formatting to make it easier to visually understand it. Now suppose I wanted uh, to sort by amount and I only wanted city. Then can I do this? Because whatever you are sorting is not there in what you are asking for as an output. So this is not going to work. For that we have another function called sort by. We will see that a little later. Now this is good, but let's see something else. So what do I have here? This is also sort, but here I have multiple sort. Notice I wanted to sort on date first and then on amount. Now the problem is sort by sort index is one parameter. If I put two comma four, that will say wrong number of parameters. That's where the array panda comes into picture. So in that single parameter, I have passed two parameters. What is the second index date within that? This and then I got it like this. Very good. And the rest of the parameters are same. So that's another way of doing it. Now let's see another variation of this. Now problem is in this earlier version of things, what was I doing? I was sorting on date, which you can see, and I was sorting on amount, which is great. But what if I want to sort on date in ascending order? and in uh, the other one in the other order and maybe I want to change that whole thing. So basically what I really want is the full flexibility of what this guy gives us where we can have multiple things and then order. So that is why sort by function is available, which is a variation, a little different syntax. So what am I saying? Sort by the same data. And then look at the. Look at the. Syntax, this is the array. Array means what original data. Now. Sort by can itself be a completely different array. In this case, it's a subset of it, but never mind. And then what is the sort order for that ascending? OK, what is the second array amount? What is the sort order? Minus one. So now you will notice that here. In date it is ascending order, but in amount it is descending order. And you can have more complex functions coming out of this also. So sort and sort by. So sort by basically what you are sorting by and what you are showing can be two different things. And there can be a combinations of them. So that is about sort. 
Now let's go further. We have. Uh, let me take a pause, drink water and also see questions. Give me a second. OK, let's go further. Like this, one of the other functions which has been added is filter. So this is base data. The table name is F base. And I just want. Unique countries which I got fine. And uh, what do I do with it? I created a drop down based on that, which you already know how to do. Data validation and in the validation, whatever is the cell hash. Now why did I do that? Because I now want to filter this data based on the country I select from here. So now I have a dynamic thing happening here based on my raw data without any struggle, without any offset functions, without any traditional shift control enter formulas, without macros. So that is how this one. So now how is this filter working? Simple F base, which is the base table. And then here I give formula F base country equal to now. What is that coming from here? And that's it. That is the filter function. Now I have given this guy F base. Of course I could have given. Something else using the structured reference as we already know. OK, now a little more. Complex that is what I was showing. I want to sort based on country, but I don't want to get the country. I just want to get the date and amount. So that is how you do it. So these structured formulas are important. For example, this is a specific syntax. Now notice F base date colon F base amount. You don't have to buy hard this. So I'll just show you how to learn these structured formulas. The best way is to point to it using the cursor and it will build the formula. For example, if I wanted to count something. Uh, let's say. I want to concat. And I want to concat this. With. This. Notice this is not possible as a structured formula. Non contiguous columns in structured formula go back to the traditional approach. But if I wanted to concat contiguous things, notice what will happen now. You see, it created a syntax. I did not type it. So this is how you learn the syntax of structured formulas. By doing it first yourself, once you're comfortable, by all means you can always type it. By the way, these table names which I'm using are also useful for navigation. For example, this is the name box where we put a name and then this drop down shows us all the names which you have defined, but all the table names also automatically appear here. So one positive side effect of giving table names is quick navigation. All right, so that was filter. We saw how to do filter based on one column, multiple things. Now let's see something more. It's a more. So this is my data. I have country. I have simple data country date amount. That's all. All these others are calculated columns. Now this itself is a table by the way. This whole thing is a table. So what is this? Now if I had said sum. Okay, look at the formula. What do I want? Currently amount of 26 is for Philippines. I want to know for across Philippines. What is the total amount? So that is called country total. So how does this work? Let me explain. If you want to understand a formula, debug it, learn the inards of it. One good way of doing that is to do evaluate formula. So what do you do? Click on the cell, go to formula, evaluate formula. Even if it's a complex formula, it will understand what to do. It will go in and 
what is underlined is where the execution is going to start based on all the prioritization rules. So it says OK, filter amount. Amount was already there, so it has taken that actual range. Then country, it expanded it. Notice it became an array. Now it is saying OK, what is that being compared to Philippines? Oh, OK, so after that some will be true, some will be false. So this whole thing now filter is going to run and then that will give the values of Philippines and those will get summed and that is how we got 86. So if you see here Philippines, 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 which is this and this and this, which is 86. So that is how we got this a combination of sum, which is a very, very old common function and filter, which is a very new function. And of course, because it's a table, it copies it automatically. Similarly, if I wanted count of country, I would have got count instead of sum. The rest of the syntax is same. Then what do we do? Oh, I want country average. Fair enough. Now what do I do? I have the total, I have the count. I just do divide this by this. Very nice. Now the issue is this became too complicated to understand. Actually, it's doing something very simple. Of course, here I could have said divide this column by this column, but I was trying to put it in a single formula. I have put these as separate columns just for explanation purpose, but in real life you would not want to waste time and space. So this is the thing. What am I doing? Whatever it is, sum of filter, which is the first part of it, and then divide that by count. That is fine, but you will notice that this part this part filter amount by country equal to country is exactly the same. That is what is making that formula suddenly become or look more complex. No, not just that. It is actually going to execute that part also twice for every row. And that is how when you use too many VLOOKUPS index match sum if there's that your file exponentially becomes slower and slower and slower. So this is the probably biggest part of revolution. As though whatever I'm showing you already is not revolutionary. Can I execute this part once and reuse it in the formula so that execution speed doubles and even the formula is easier to look at? So let's see. This is the, exactly the same formula shown here. And that is where the let function comes into picture. So notice what it is doing. It is doing something. I will explain what that is, but it's giving you exactly the same result and you can test it out with your data as well. You will realize that there is a significant performance improvement. Now in order to understand this part, what is the difference here? We have the filter function. We have the sum and count, but this new animal called let has come in. So let's understand let. Let's start simple. So if I have a formula in which I'm using the same function again and again, I use it as let. So let me actually show you a simple part first and then we'll go. So what is the syntax of let? Let has a name, okay? So I call it a name. And then does the name have a value? Yes, so let's say X. This is like saying X is equal to 6. Then I'm saying OK. What else do I want? Y is equal to 3. And then so what? The last thing is I want to use that X and Y to do something with it. So I'm saying X plus Y. It's not our checking in any way. Obviously, it's going to give you 9. But if that X and Y was a long complex filter formula and I was using that twice, then this becomes elegantly useful. So here is a different example. I have some data and I want to document this data has how many columns, how many rows and how many items. So how do I do that? The function is simple. What will I need to do if I want to know how many columns this table has? So this is a table. 
this table is called India mid market. OK, so the formula would be equal to what? I want columns, so there is a function called columns, which is not new. And what? India mid market. OK, and it will give me four. So using this, I have created rows, which is another function and items, which is another function. So now notice the formula. What have I said here? India T, this is T. T is just a variable I defined. This variable will work only within this function. T India mid market, which is this array. And say it's saying columns of T and this is I'm just documenting. So that's why there is ampersand, ampersand, ampersand. But otherwise, what is it? Column of T, rows of T and count of T. Otherwise, this is a long name would have appeared thrice. Nice. Now I want to reuse this formula for another table. If I had used the traditional syntax, I would have to replace that table name in three places. Now what do I do? I take this formula, copy it here. For this table, I paste it. Right now it is still referring to the current wrong table, India mid market, no problem. What do I do now? This is a new table. Done. I look at India SME now. Oh, so what do I do here? I go here, delete this, and just change it to India SME. Now, by the way, how to delete? Don't do this. This is really bad. That's why this syntax has hyperlinks. Hyperlinks is a fast way to select parameters. So now, I am just replacing it in one place. It understands what is this T? Where is T? It uses T. So that's simple. So that is the power of let. Now again, as you must be realizing, let by itself is powerful, but it can be used in combination with all the other functions we are trying, and then it becomes exponentially more powerful. There is another function some other functions we'll look at and then lastly we'll look at lambda. So switch switch is another kind of simple function. It's like switch we used to use in programming. So I have some data. This is the syntax of switch. What is the syntax? OK. I'm back. So there is a related question. That's why I'm going to answer it now. I have been showing you all this based on auto expanding functions, arrays and all that. And all my raw data is in. Tables, so one question is, does this only work with tables? No, at all, not at all. This works with simple non table data also. So this is raw data. It's not a table and here. Can I use the unique function? Absolutely, I can. The problem is obviously someday your data is going to. Data is going to what? Increase and then what is the point? This function is able to understand a dynamic array, but your base data itself is not dynamic. That is the important part of table. So raw data should be in table so that this expands automatically, which is what happened here. So here if I had put because it's a table and here I put. That dynamically changes, so unless there is a very specific reason for not using a table, which I can't think of. Use tables for raw data. All right, now let's look at the switch function. Switch, what do I have? Just 10 to 150. That's all. Now switch function syntax is like this data, of course. In this case, we are going row by row because switch takes one value and then decides what to do with that value. So it's saying if this value is this, give me this output. If this value is this, give me this output. Remember, it is explicitly that value. We are not talking greater than, lesser than kind of thing. So generally this would be more useful with explicit text, but still works with all data types. And the last parameter is not a pair. 
that is the default value in case it doesn't match 150 or 100 what happens the exception so that is hyphen so that is exactly what happened here only 100 matched 150 matched all others are hyphen so if you have multiple things and then you want to match them to another output yes you don't overdo it if you put up like this two three five okay but if there are 25 then we look up is better or x lookup which is even better than we look up now ifs is another function it's like nested if traditionally if without switch and you wanted to do it using a formula not we look up you would have done nested if so this is nested if what am i saying nested if always has to have multiple ifs but without the complexity of too many brackets there are only two brackets here starting bracket ending bracket if you had done this using nesting it would have had multiple brackets so what do we do it goes from left to right whenever something is true it stops that's it so because it has to understand bigger to smaller i have given the 150 parameter first so if it's above 150 it's big if it's above 100 it is medium and then what of course i could have created multiple or oh, let's do that here the last one is important exception so if nothing matches then what true true has to be there and then small so suppose i remove this true small notice what happens i'll get any so that is how it is and if i wanted to add one more category let's say i want the data between 50 and above something like that is small and then whatever doesn't fit that is true or one also will do hyphen fine so that is how nested if simplified and then of course what are we doing here that data notice what has happened this data 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 if you have 20 times you are going to type 20 times oh now we have let so life becomes simpler so that is how incremental improvement keeps happening now the most coveted thing called x lookup so let's see what happens now all of you know we look up all of you know look up so x lookup let's do simple stuff first so i have base data just amount and currency for all practical purposes we are going to use the base currency now i need to look up this currency in a lookup table so this is my lookup table the table name is currencies simple now i don't have to explain this you already know how we lookup works but just for the sake of completeness we look up of course this we lookup is using tables and if you are not using tables with existing we lookup that itself is bad can start using it so the structured syntax here base currency and then currencies table remember often this table is in another sheet and very long give it a name you don't even have to select it and then comma two comma zero so i got whatever i did not get nzd euro because they are not there of course when i add more they will adjust lookup works in a different way it takes the separate uh, this is the lookup one is the lookup vector one is the result vector which could be somewhere else which could be in whatever order and all that but you will notice that here it does give me some value for nz because the way it checks is different than the way it checks lookup i'm not going to go into differences between these two probably you already know it if you don't know it don't bother there is a better version called we x lookup start using it so x lookup what does it do of course first value is lookup second value is lookup array like lookup itself second value is also return array but it has some additional things and that is what makes it amazing if not found what to do which is very useful otherwise we use is na or is a if is error all kinds of things or if error that becomes just one parameter so life is simpler faster 
and what is the next match model? What does that mean? Now this is really revolutionary. What are we talking about? Zero is exact match, which is equivalent to what we are used to. Then we have exact match next smaller item because sometimes what happens even if you had said one in order we look up it is going to decide where it will match in the range here now you can choose the upper part of the range or lower part of the range and then very very coveted feature which people wanted always wild card also we will see what that means and the last parameter that's also important search mode Many, many people wanted we look up to search from bottom to top. So now one or minus one. And then if you know that this is sorted in ascending order, then of course first to last will work. But if you know and you can guarantee that the lookup table will be in ascending order or lookup vector rather, then use two because that's going to be much, much more fast. Why? Because the this kind of search goes blindly from one, two, three, four till it reaches. Binary search is designed to be phenomenally faster than linear search. So sorted data, if it's ascending order, use two. Descending order, use minus two. You will get significant improvement in the X lookup performance. And you can check it out and compare it with whatever you are doing currently. So that's one part. Now what happens? Can XLOOKUP give me multiple results? Yes, it can. For example, notice what I've done here. I've said currencies I'm looking at and I want convert uh, the conversion value and the region. But what happened? It's going to go into one cell and table. This is also a table tables and spilled arrays don't mix with each other so it's shouting but then i wanted both those values so now i used a function which you have seen called array to text so what is this x lookup returning to me an array containing two things conversion number and region and then just converted it to text so now i can see it by the way v lookup can also return multiple values if you use the array formula so I'm looking up this based on this table. Now I'm selecting it just to show you, but actually it will pick it up. And now what can I do? I have to specify a number, right? So I want currency, then I'll say two comma zero. Agreed, but I want the conversion factor and the region. Can I use array here? I don't know. Yes, I can and it will spill. So even a VLOOKUP can incorporate this array functionality now. So this is again very useful. Now like XLOOKUP, we have we have X look like XLOOKUP, we have we have X match as well, which is like this. What is this? XLOOKUP like that X match. So this is my data. This is just an input data. So what is it saying? Pick up this data. Look for whatever is written here. From where the array and then match mode and search mode. What is the match mode and search mode? Exactly same parameters as we saw for X lookup. Now, what is it going to return? It's a match function, so it's just going to give me the number. So Australite found here, so it's giving me this. By the way, this is a use of sequence. Just for demo purpose, I have said sequence. Now what is going to happen? This is outside the table because sequence is a spill function. It will not fit inside the table. But I want it to have the same number of rows. So rows of XML base. And I've just physically put it there. So what is the benefit of that? If I add a new item, this will also expand, although it is not a part of the table because of the spill behavior. Generally, you don't need to do such things, but for demo purpose to show what is happening in XMatch, I'm using this. Now, 
Let's see different examples of this. So instead of manually struggling with this by doing comma and zero, I have just parameterized it. So what is the match mode? Different match modes, right? So I have just created them here. So now suppose I said exact match. In this case, I say exact match or next smaller. Nothing changed because it's still Australian. Exact match or next. Nothing changed because exact match is working. Then I say wildcard. Nothing changed because it's still matching. OK, so far so good. Now, what is the last parameter? There is 10. What is the last parameter? Search mode. And what are the parameters in that? Search first to last, last binary. Now I say last to first. Notice that 5 changed to 10 because it reverse order it found Australia right here. So now let's try something else. Let's keep it. The default now instead of this, I will say a U star. This is wildcard. So what does wildcard mean? Star means any number of characters. Question mark means a single character. So a U star means start with a U, whatever else. By the way, this syntax works in auto filter also. Now it's saying I can't find it because it's exact match. So I'm going to change that parameter to wildcard and then it will find it a U star. There is no find next by the way. That is how. Now if I had said search direction from bottom, then what will happen? Obviously it will find Australia now because it's the last one. So this is how X match works and of course you can use it in combination with all kinds of things. Another set of X functions which have been added, all kinds of things have been added. Max if, min if, average if, all of them with an S. What does that mean? Multiple parameters or multiple conditions. Like if S was multiple if, like that max if S and so on. So let's see what the data is. This is the table. Table is called sales data. And what do we have? We have product area code, employee code and sales. That's all. Now I want product wise total. I think you have seen something like this, but that was just a sum. Now I want product wise using sum if. So sum if from where? From where? What is the range? Product. And uh, what is the criteria? Product match the product product and what are you summing? Sale. That's it. Area wise total. Yeah, same thing. Now product average. Notice what is happening here. This is average if s. Lot of people wanted this function for a long time. So let's expand it and see what it does. So what do you want to do average based on which is the sale? OK, and then it has pairs of multiple criteria. So what have I said here? I want product equal to whatever is the current product and the area code equal to what is the current area code. So notice here product wise total is 3000. That is for mask. Here area wise total is sorry say Area wise total is 2000 for north, but what I want here is total for the whole thing where area is north and product is mask and the average of that. So that is how it happened as a combination of product equal to whatever is the current product area code equal to whatever is the current area code and then do average based on which column this column. So like that, instead of this average if is, I would have could have said max or min or all those star if is functions. All right, now let's go further. Let me again take a pause and look at how many questions we have. So I decide how much more I speak versus how many function questions I handle. So one very important thing all these functions which I talked about and I have shown this to you, but 
just to clarify. Each function was introduced in different versions. So if you don't have that particular version, then it will not work. If there was an array formula which is spilling, for example, and you have the new version, but someone else doesn't have, it will automatically be converted to the older type of array formula. Now exactly what happens when you have a file which contains a new function, but you opened it in an Excel version which is older, that depends from case to case, function to function, but in general it tries to degrade elegantly without unless there is no scope, it will not give you an error. It will generally go back to the older syntax. So Raul dependent drop down list is very simple. Create the first list, map it to. So let me just explain what he's trying to talk about just because there is a function. So this is a list based on this list. I have created a drop down. Now you want a dependent drop down. What do you need really? You just need something which is simple like this. So in this case, I have a drop down list. If I want a drop down based on this array, what do I do? You already know. In this case, I will just refer to the first cell. Now if you have another dependent list, in that you refer to this as the input and that takes care of it. That is dependent multiple drop downs. OK, now let's go to the other most important probably, which was added I think a month back. Depending on even if you have Office 365, depending on the amount of or rather the frequency at which your IT team updates your Office versions, you may or may not have this function, but soon you will get it even if you have Office Pro Plus. If you want to get all the functions and features, not just functions, you go to and request IT and say give me the beta channel. Uh, earlier it was called Office Insider. Never mind, let's understand another very, very powerful thing which is Lambda. And let's start simple. Many times we have a function to do, so let's just do a simple area calculation. What is this area? And then we have length and we have breadth. I'm doing this from scratch because it's a new concept and a little difficult to get our head around first time. That's why. So I have length of three, breadth of four, and a very simple formula this multiplied by this. Now I want is there a function? Is this a function? Yes, but this is a different thing. I want a simple area function. We don't have such a function. So every time I have to do area calculation, I have to keep writing this multiply by that. I want to simplify that and I want to have a function called my area where I pass two parameters and it does whatever the job is and tomorrow the way that changes for example. So I should not be required to go and find all the instances and change them. I should be able to change it in one place. So essentially I'm creating a user defined function. Creating a user defined function is not a new concept. We have been doing it either through VBA, JavaScript, whatever or XLL by C++, but without all that. So this is what you do. So this is simple function and just to make this easy to understand, I'm also going to keep writing formula text so that we keep documenting what we are doing. Very simple formula. Now let's see a Lambda version of it. Oh, by the way, what does Lambda mean in simple terms? Let me show you depending on uh, which industry you are Lambda can mean many different things, but we are not talking about any of these. We are talking about reusable functions in Excel. Yes, Python also has similar concept. Many languages have. So coming back, even in AWS, the concept is same. It's a headless function. So 
let's say lambda. Lambda itself is a function by the way. Now, what is it saying? Give me a parameter or a calculation. Uh, okay, so we have two parameters apparently x comma y. So we give x comma y. And then notice what it's saying. You give me more parameters or give me a calculation. So now we don't have any more parameters. So here I say x multiplied by y. Done. Okay. Now what? I press enter. I have not specified what is x, what is y. So if I just press enter, it's saying I don't know what you want to do, but we created a structure for it, a shell. This is how we define the function. Normally in a language you say define function, then give parameters and then end function. We did that in a very abbreviated, smart, simple manner. Of course, it's not easy to understand when you look at the syntax, but it's very quick. But now I want to test it. How do I say what is X? What is Y? You open another bracket here. And of course I could have used this because it's Excel finally. So this is same thing. OK, or if I didn't have this, I could have directly passed the parameter and it would still work. So I tested my Lambda. This is important because this is a very simple function. In real life, there can be more complex functions. Having done that, we made our Lambda. Now I want this to be converted to a function called my area and then when I type my function called my area, I should be able to pass whatever and it should give me 20. So now what, what do we do? Now that we have tested our lambda, get rid of the parameters, copy the lambda, copy the lambda. Now go to formulas name manager. In name manager, you create a new name. By default, whatever it is, doesn't matter. We because I have selected that and currently we have Lambda. That's why it is showing me. But I'm going to give it whatever name I have. My. Area I will call it. Now it can be workbook worksheets pay. It's important because we are creating the function. You may know it. Someone else may not know it. So document it. So some help we wrote here, but what is it referring to? It is referring to a cell. No, we don't want that. We have just copied the syntax, so we put the syntax here and then click OK. So now I have something called my area here, so my job is done. Now I can go anywhere in this workbook and say my area. Notice calculate area input length that came. Unfortunately, as of now, Parameters don't come. Hopefully that will come soon, but now I can type whatever and it will do the calculation. So that is how you do lambdas. Now that I have done this, I can go anywhere in my sheet and here I can say my area and it will work. So let's see some more complex examples of this just to get the idea clear. One of them is radius. Now you know the flow, so I'm going to do faster. 2 pi and r. r is the radius. This is the input. So this is a traditional formula. This is lambda created, but I have not tested it with the by passing the parameters outside. Now here I am passing it. I am using the same 5. And then what did I do? I created a lambda function called circumference. That function is already there in my name manager. So if I go to circumference, what is the function? Nothing. It is just lambda r to pi, whatever. Same thing copy pasted there. That's all. So easy. And now I can use the word circumference anywhere in this workbook. This is a little more complicated. I want to calculate how many words are there in a text. So how do you generally do that? I have broken down to simplify it. First I calculate the length. What is the length of this? 
18. Now I also convert this to no spaces by using substitute where there is a space removed. So this became this. Now I calculate the length of this and then I say this minus this. So that gives me three. And then because there is one extra word, I say plus one. So that is how I did. This sentence gave me four words. So if I combine all this, the formula becomes like this. Length of the original thing plus um, subtract the length of. The same sentence or string or input without spaces. Do the subtract and then add one. So this is my formula. So now I create a lambda from it. Now I test it with whatever and then I create a function out of it. Now I have a simple count to word function. Now compare and you will start realizing the difference. Every time I want to count words, I don't have to do this grotesque thing. I have a much simpler, smarter and faster way of saying count words and this will work across the board. Now of course this is workbook. Now if you have created a lot of lambdas which are reusable across, you create a template and start using that template and then you can reuse it across workbooks mm -hmm. as well. So that is how Lambda works. Now we have a lot of things in terms of questions. I have 16 questions, so I'm going to summarize and then go ahead. By the way, all these things require you to have. Uh, they will work across workbooks also, but the other workbook has to be open. Otherwise you will get ref error. So to summarize, we have seen a lot of functions lot in a very, very quick manner. I hope at least conceptually have understood them. I'm going to give you this sample file so you, you can practice. Of course, in the help also there are a lot of samples and there are hundreds of examples on the web. But from a practical point of view, what are you going to do? So what am I saying? Of course you will learn, you will test it, but it is important to apply it. Now when you apply it, don't just go to a live file and do it. Make a copy and initially use it in a simpler context. When you get the hang of it, then use it in a more complicated situation. Do a parallel run and once it is done, then you can imbibe it. Now assuming you benefited from it, it's important that you share it with others and ideally standardize this across the organization. Otherwise what will happen? There are pockets of excellence somewhere and everyone else is inefficient. That doesn't work. So that's the end of the thing. If you like this, you may be wondering what kind of services we offer. So this is what we do and this is what we don't do. I don't do office Excel training because I'm sure you must have attended a lot of it, but in the long run it doesn't work. What I do actually is process optimization. You come to me, you show me how you are using your tools and I will optimize it or I'll do a customized training program. One kind of training I'm currently doing, which is Excel plus Power BI effective adoption. Because many people are looking at Power BI separately, Excel separately. No, they are complementary tools and a lot of concepts which are in Power BI are already available in Excel and people are using Excel, don't know them. That's a problem. And finally, as I said, Standardization is important, so convert all this knowledge into standard operating procedures and I can help you do that as well. So what are the deliverables? You will get the session recording. You will get sample file with examples and I'll give you a summary of whatever we have covered in a logical order. So before we close and of course I take questions. This is my team. Thanks for all their help. So thank you, Shesham Raj Zeus. Thank you for your patience. And it was a pleasure addressing you. See you soon. Bye bye.